Hey everyone, it's Daryl from Houseplant Journal. Today I'm going to give you a tour of the plants at my church. So out here, by the entrance, you can see that there's two beautiful hanging vines. These are Philodendron Brazil. Now they don't normally stay out here, I just put them out here on Sundays so that they can decorate the entrance as people come in. I think it definitely adds a nice natural touch to the entrance. This philodendron definitely got its name from having this beautiful variegation of yellow and green together, which looks a lot like the flag of Brazil. But even on the same plant, you can see a huge variety of different ways that the leaf is variegated. Some of them are even pure yellow. Some of the stripes are super thin. Some of them almost take up the whole leaf. Some are purely green which I think probably makes them just a heart leaf philodendron. Both of these baskets started out as just, you know, very short vines all within the basket. But after several months, they've grown so long. I think they're actually hanging down a little bit too far. So I'm gonna probably take some cuttings and there's probably enough here to make another two or three baskets. So let's get these guys back to where they normally grow. So back here, I have a south facing window, which gets a lot of sun. And here's where those two Philodendron Brazils actually live. Uh, so during the week for six days, they get nice bright light. Uh, it might actually be a little bit too bright for them, but they seem to be okay, um, you know, not getting sunburned, really. I do have to be a little careful to make sure that their vines don't get stepped on. So, other than those two guys, here I have a Pothos Marble Queen. Uh, this one was a propagation from the big one I have at home. And now you can see this one is almost ready to propagate as well. And here we have a jade plant. This is the one with uh, these little red edges on the leaves. This one definitely likes the sun. Now over here, on the far side of the window, I have a begonia. And I think somebody on my Instagram said it was called a beefsteak begonia because of its uh, maroon colored, almost brown colored back parts of the leaf pretty interesting. If you look in here, near the pot, I really like all this craziness going on here. The furry leaves and they just start out. Now I bought this tall, uh, I think it's a tomato trellis here, for a very special plant over in the next room. So here, in one of the Sunday school rooms, I keep my Monstera Deliciosa. And this is one of my favorite plants. I just love how it can get so large, and these leaves can have different shapes the more they mature. Look at how the new leaves unravel, revealing their shape. While I was in Hong Kong and in Singapore, I saw just how big they can get. They can have all sorts of cuts and holes, and the leaf gets to about, oh, I don't know, three to four feet in uh, length. Now for this plant, you typically need a pretty big space because as you can see, it can get a little bit unruly, but you're supposed to put up a trellis on them, which is why I bought this trellis here. So looking down here, you can see that I already have one kind of short trellis and the vines here are growing past it now. So it's probably time for a higher one. At each of the leaf nodes, you can see that at the vine, they grow these, what are called aerial roots. And in the wild, they are helping the plant attach themselves to tree trunks. So why don't we set up the trellis and help this monstera grow really tall? I've got my tools here. I'm going to take a look and see which vines 
uh, need to be trellised up higher and which ones can stay on this lower one. Now let's see where we can fit this trellis in. Hmm. This might be a little tricky. Maybe I'll have to take apart the old one. Okay, now we got all sorts of velcro and twist ties to tie up to the Monstera Deliciosa. Okay, so I'm all done tying this uh, Monstera Deliciosa up to the trellis. And as you can see, it looks a little disheveled right now. But uh, don't worry, plants are living things and they can adjust to whatever situation you put them in. Well, almost whatever situation. But generally what happens is after you uh, rearrange a plant or for example, when you transplant a cutting into a new pot, the leaves and everything always look kind of all messy. Don't obsess over it, just let them be. Make sure they're tightly into their soil and as long as you uh, give them the right conditions, so in here we have a uh, nice bright indirect light for the Monstera, the leaves will adjust themselves to face the light for the optimal photosynthesis. So that's all for the plants I have at my church. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Houseplant Journal. I'm Daryl, thanks for watching. Bye.